want to do another video on recording sick time in QuickBooks. I have another video on that. It covers what we call the accrual method. There's really more to the sick time law in California than that. And uh, rather than have this cover only part, I just decided to do the, the whole thing in, in one video. So a little repetition if you've seen the other one, but I'll try to get through that quickly. This, um, this shows the tools in QuickBooks, how you can track sick and vacation time for employees, regardless of where you are. But as an example, we're using the, the state law in California about mandated sick time. So in order to change that for existing employees, I'm going to go to the Employee Center. Let's pick uh, Greg Snyder here. I'm going to double click there to edit. I'm going to go to Payroll Information, Sick and Vacation. If I'm tracking sick time in another system, Excel, paper and pencil, whatever it might be, I may have uh, hours available in the current year that uh, Greg still has. He may have used some hours in the current year. I would put those amounts here. But if I'm setting this up as a new program with uh, new employees, I'm just going to start at this point and move down, and, and that's what we're going to do here. So the accrual method, as I mentioned uh, before in the other video, sorry, uh, is the every hour on the paycheck. And so for every hour on the paycheck, the employee is going to get 0.3333 hour. That's basically, that's two minutes. If I move out of that field, you'll see QuickBooks change that decimal to two minutes. In preferences, you can have two different settings. How do you want to see time? Do you want to see it as a decimal? Do you want to see it as, as minutes and hours? So the preference in the sample file here is set to looking at time and as, uh, or displaying time as hours and minutes. Even though I put it in as a decimal, QuickBooks does the conversion and shows it in, as minutes. If you had the preference set the other way and you put in two minutes, you'll see QuickBooks change the two minutes to 0 0.03333, same amount of time either way. Okay, man, uh, maximum number of hours, statute requires 48 hours set as a maximum if we're using the accrual method. The hours do not reset each year, they just cap at 48. The complication for some people is that you are required to cap it at 48, and yet you're only required to give 24 in a year. And so, you know, unfortunately, there's no way to track that in QuickBooks, it's going to give you some kind of a warning or a message. Nothing's going to pop up and say, hey, they've reached the 24. But you have to use a secret, uh, you, you use a, sip, a separate pay, payroll type item when paying sick time. And so you'll see that on QuickBooks reports. You'll know exactly how many hours they've taken if you run the payroll reports year to date. So that's the accrual method. That, uh, that works for Greg. Let's uh, take Elizabeth and let's use the other method. Let me show that to you. The other method is front loading the 24 hours. So same place again, if I'm using a different system. I've got these two fields here so that I'm printing correct information on current year paychecks. But if we're setting up new employee or new um, new program here. I'm just going to go directly to the accrual period, which is beginning of the year in this case. 24 hours are going to be available at the beginning of the year. It's not going to go over 24. We don't have to carry those over to the next year. And then I am going to uh, select reset the hour because they're going to get a new 24 hours every year. They only got one hour left. They're going to get a new 24 uh, at the beginning of the next year. So I've set up one employee using the accrual method, and I've set one using the method of front-loading the 24 hours. Both are uh, legitimate ways to do the sick time in California, and you can use both. You can have a group of employees that are on the accrual method, and you can have a group of employees that are on the lump sum method, and that's fine. One other thing I want to show you on the 
tracking of sick and vacation time here is that it, it, as you set up new employees, you don't really necessarily want to have to put all that information in each time if it's going to be the same for everyone. So whenever you have information for employees or settings for employees that are going to be virtually the same for everyone, go to this uh, Manage Employee Information, Change New Employee Default Settings, and then in this case, I'm going to go down here to Sick Vacation, and let's just use the front load method. Beginning of each year, 24 hours, maximum 24 hours, reset, and do not accrue employee sick and vacation hours for sick and vacation hours. In, in this case, front loading, that, 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 um, that setting there doesn't make a lot of difference. But if you're using the accrual method, then what that's telling you, what, what QuickBooks is, is uh, asking you there, is when we give this person 30 hours of sick time, does that mean they accrue another hour of sick time? The answer is no. Uh, it's only the actual hours that they're actually on the job. We're not giving them additional t uh, paid time off for using sick and vacation hours paid. So now, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> with these settings in employee defaults, every time I go to create a new employee, that will already be there. I could change it, but that will be the default. I won't have to set that. So hope that's helpful on uh, tracking those sick hours, especially in California. But in anywhere, uh, uh, you use the same tools, you would just, the numbers would be different as far as available time and, and how it's calculated. So thanks for watching the video. I hope that was helpful.